No, I have a book. Yes. Do you write here? I want. <laughs> well, there's some millennial going on right there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, good evening and welcome to the Financial Review Committee meeting of January 25th, 2022. Madam Secretary, will you please provide a roll call? When your name is called, please answer with here or present. Member Amesqua? Here. Member Federico? Here. Member Killebrew? Here. Vice Chair Frost? Here. Chair Mitchell? Here. For the record, all members of the Financial Review Committee are present. Okay, we'll move on to the public comments portion of the meeting. There's a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comments portion of the agenda. All comments are to be directed to the Financial Review Committee and shall not consist of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain professional courteous decorum during their comments. State law prohibits the Financial Review Committee from taking action on specific items unless it appears on the agenda. Madam Secretary, are there any public comments? We have no public comments at this time. Okay, we will move forward to new business. Um, item one, organization of the Financial Review Committee. We need an election of a chair, an election of a vice chair. Um, does the Financial Review Committee have any nominations for chair and vice chair? We just keep it all the same. I was actually going to nominate you to be chair. Oh, but I spoke first. The chair always speaks first. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Second Raul's motion? Sec yeah. Two for Raul to be chair. No, yeah. oh, you're kidding. No, no you. Which? You. <laughs> Whose motion are you seconding? <laughs> I'm seconding her motion. My motion. You're seconding her oh, motion. Well, do we need to consider his first? Or? Right. <laughs> now, Madam Chair, you're in charge. What would you Madam like to Chair, do? Um, is there a lawyer point of order. Uh, does Mr. Amesqua's uh, nomination need a second? Because if it doesn't, it could die without a second. Often, certain boards you don't need a second for nominations, but yeah, it's true. I think in our city council meetings we do seconds for nominations, so I would assume here we would do the same. That sounds right. And I think his doesn't have a second. No, yours does not. Okay. <laughs> Pop it down. You've seconded okay. Ms. Oh, Mitchell's. I will second Ms. Mitchell's. Okay. So cool. all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Great. Uh, are you okay? I, I, I want to make I'm sure. Call for it's, a vote. Yeah. Oh, I'm so okay. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> are you like, calling no. it Raul for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. You're I'm good. You're gonna be great. <laughs> okay, member Mesqua. I can vote for myself. Yeah. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Member Federico? Aye. Member Killebrew? Aye. Vice Chair Frost? Aye. Chairman Chair? Aye. This motion passes by a vote of 5 to 0. Now we need a recommendation for a vice chair. He's supposed to say it. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> what? I, You're already done. Yeah. Yeah. It I'll happens immediately. Know. Really? I'll just sit here. Okay. But does it happen immediately or is it picked up the next one? Immediately. Uh, right now. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So now we need uh, where am I here? So call me. Election of a vice chair. I have right here. Oh, no, those have notes oh, on there for you. This one has notes, so everything in E is what you need. Oh, I see. You can say it better. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so uh, nomination for election of a vice chair. Can you seek volunteers or? <laughs> I'll, I'll nominate myself if nobody else wants to do it. Second. Second. <laughs> okay. So we take a vote? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Member Federico? Yes. Member Killebrew? Yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Vice Chair Frost? Mm, yes. <laughs> Chair Mesca? Yes. This vote passes by a vote of 5 to 0. Great. Okay, so the next item is approval of the minutes from the October 26, 21 FRC meeting. I'll move to approve the minutes. Uh, to the vote. Member Federico? Yes. Member Killebrew? Yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Vice Chair Frost? Aye. 
I'm at, um, Chair Mesta. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. Oh, okay. So this motion passes by a vote of 401 with Chair Amesqua abstaining. Okay. And uh, the third item we have is the quarterly financial report ending December 31st. So ask for staff report. Okay. Um, this is the quarterly report for um, fiscal year 21-22. Uh, <laughs> so it's through uh, July through December 21. And total general fund revenues totaled 19.4 million. And really the story here is TOP. We had record receipts for the first six months of the year. Um, total TOT for the first six months was 7.9 million. Uh, total general fund expenditures is at 18, 18.3 million, um, nothing really notable um, except uh, we had an increase of salaries about 166,000, uh, police services 122,000, and safety, safety and lighting expenses of 103,000. And that concludes the staff report. So the TOT record was a record for ever in the history of the city mm -hmm. for the first six months? Mm -hmm. every, wow. every, every month. month. Every month. Every month. Wow. But Excellent. it's not looking good for January. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Only crime. <clears throat> oh. We're getting reports of last minute cancellations for 40% of the book business. Wow. But we're still in budget. What was the cause of the increase in police services? Contract costs. Just overall, the contract went up, so costs went up. Can I go off the record and like ask a question that's not going to be recorded or might be recorded? You will be away. recorded. Go away? Yeah. Okay. I was curious to know. <laughs> no, there was a discussion on, on uh, next door, which I never see, but I happen to look at it on, on overtime for sure. It's related. But uh, I guess I would say that uh, I'm not a next door fan, but whatever, there are 29 comments. And I would say that 27 were positive. Like, they deserve it, they heard it, we should have more police, we should have plenty, you know. So it was all extremely uh, supportive. Or whatever that's for. I think it's relevant, and I, I would just, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. You know, a certain amount of overtime is part of our budgeted planning for, for police services, and so it doesn't bother me. If, certain deputy or sergeant is earning a certain amount of overtime. And that we, quite frankly, it's cheaper to pay overtime than it is to hire another full-time deputy. Right. So as far as fiscal responsibility goes, you know, I, understand, I, I tend to think those comments are ill-informed, um, except it's great to get people yeah. you know, don't mind us spending, but anyone who thinks negatively about spending money on police overtime just doesn't get how that contract works. Yeah, yeah and, our and I think for most essential services, uh, they're experiencing overtime, right? Because of COVID, people are out of COVID. Whether it's a doctor, a fireman, or a police officer, it's just the environment we're dealing with. I read the report. I really don't have any comments. I was pleasantly surprised with all the good news. Um, Mr. Chair, can I just ask a couple quick questions? Yeah. Um, see on um, sort of the, the main page of the quarterly report itself. Can you just sort of summarize um, like under the budget fund balance summary, we had a $4.3 million transfer out. Right, so if that's a budget, so this is the budgeted fund balance. Right. So right now we have $4.3 million transfer out of the general fund. Most of that is to the CIP, mm -hmm. about 100000 to the faci Facilities Improvement Fund. Mm -hmm. um, we've made the CIP transfer so far, and we just have to do 100000 That's what I was just kind of wondering, is yeah. how we are tracking on those stuff. And our reserves are still 100% fully funded. 100% yep. fully funded. Plus, plus unassigned, over, overfunded. And we're overfunded on our unassigned, right? And we'll be talking Just super that. big picture. So I just like getting yeah. a big picture update. Okay. Yeah. That, that's really my only question. Yeah, the overfunded we'll be talking about on our mid year report, which yeah. is what we told you back in September on our rollover report. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. A couple, qu just a couple quick questions. Um, Mike, do you happen to know has Rain Tree um, been reassessed, and are we receiving those? What, in they're, the they're coming in in supplementals. I'm not sure that it, they went. I can, we can actually pull that up and look at it. It's built into our HDL report. I was just curious what it was assessed at. Actually, oh, I, I actually had that at one point in time. Based on valuations, so Wait, it's not like market value, it's um, construction valuations. Um, so original, original value of the original purchase value of the property plus the market valuations from the from the improvements that were valued through the kind of, through their magic box or whatever they basically values on things. It usually happens pretty quick though um, with certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would just I'll look at. I'm just curious what it was. Um, and then the franchise fees. Um, I just thought of this now. If AT and T is stringing some fiber, I think they're stringing fiber up top, or they're running lines next to Cox. How does that work with our franchise agreements? Do we get a percentage of revenue? Uh, so, okay, so there kind of is no. Up front we'll, look, we'll look at it. Okay. I heard the same thing. I heard they're running. They're stringing some fiber in the ranch industry. Yeah. They are. And they've strung fiber in the ca in Capo a while ago. But I don't know if they're actually. Seems ridiculous. We don't think they have the backbone to connect it to you. That's what right. we just had this conversation with Matt yesterday. But they can do anything they want on the poles, right? Like, yeah. they don't tell us necessarily. They just go and. But once we, they we, they're not informing anybody of their game plans um, because there's, I mean, even when they come pull permits to do the micro trenching and stuff, we get no details on what they're doing because of you know, terrorist trade, trade threats. Secrets. No, it's uh, literally that's the policy from PUC down. But oh. we don't share. We'll see them out in the street, and we. Honestly, don't know exactly what they're doing other than we get a permit for the size of the trench, the length of it, the days they're there. Ooh. It's all top secret. <clears throat> so, those that in theory, I'm speculating that what they might be stringing on the utility poles could be connections for 5G network, like could two little 5G emitters. I can't imagine what else it would be. Yeah, it's got to be 5G. Yeah. And 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 once they if they start opening up shop and start providing services for folks, they automatically need to kick back one percent to us. Uh, whatever the we'll have to look at the franchise agreement. But. Okay. That was same for sell. Like like if, if AT and T is putting this stuff up there to manage their cellular five G network, I think everyone assumes oh it must be for home telephone or cable or something. But you can't even get AT and T cable in Capital Beach or the Ranch industry, so it's got to be for five G. And so we aren't—we're not going to get a percentage of, no, of for what sale. they're getting on cell phone bills. We're not going to get any of that. Got it. And why would they need to run it there? Why would they run it? Because AT and T works now. It's regular AT and T here. 4G works, but 5G requires all sorts of little antennas all over the place. So got to talk to each other. I'm guessing uh, that it's got something to do with 5G. I don't know why else at t would be running anything on power poles. Yeah, when I asked our staff, what are they doing? They no idea. Not. Would they not run it to compete internet-wise? Cox? Yeah, but if it's cellular, we, get, we don't have a dog in that game, in that hunt, so... <coughs> Can they even? First of all, internet internet fiber doesn't hang from telephone poles. It dries up in the sun, so it can't be. I don't know what they're doing. You talk about. Yeah, whatever that little stringy Madu Madu hickey coming from the pole down to the house that lets you turn on ESPN. I'll actually send somebody up on a bucket truck to look at the the cable to see what it is. <laughs> The reason why I'm asking is because I, I had Cox come out for our <laughs> property, and the guy the guy said, "Oh, I can't touch that one. That's AT and T's. I'm it's not I'm not allowed to." 
So, anyway, okay. So I get, I'm just curious, <clears throat> the cash and investments, mm -hmm. that total of 50.8 million, like who, which funds own that cash, just in broad strokes? We have a, Is that we have a, a 99, we have a 99 in there. Is it under the same item? Well, we have all the funds in here, so you'll see claim on cash. So we should, should have a fund 98, actually. No reason to be dated. He's looking at our pooled cash fund. Oh, pooled cash. Well, we don't have it in, in this report. It is in the uh, oh, monthly nice. treasure report. But you'll see we have all the fund balance sheets in here and every one of them. Yeah. If you get fund 98 for the pooled cash, it'll actually have the equity section with all the, also with all the owners of it listed in it. But like in broad strokes, who, who's the biggest? Obviously the general fund reserves. General fund, CIP fund. Um, and likely the trust account for all the deposits we have would be the other one. Trust has 11. Uh, and the trust and is for what? These are all the deposits we take in for all the planning, building, engineering, and other things. Um, not our money yet. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, CIP has 12.4. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And then so general, the and kind of cash. general funds of 19. Yeah. That's close. All right. Any other questions on item number three? Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, we have one more since Mr. Frost brought up franchise fees. Um, Mike, you know that conversation we had a couple weeks ago about franchise fees? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what we're sort of quick get a feel for how the committee feels about that topic. If we could put it on a future agenda. Yeah, we yeah. can yeah. talk about it in the future. So next agenda, a discussion about um, franchise fees from AT&T, um, possible. All of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, discuss, yeah. I mean, franchise fees. Cox, yeah. To discuss possible uh, policy consideration to reserve them for specific uses. Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> yeah, oh, I see where you're going. They, right now they go to the general fund, and uh, I just want to discuss what it would. The implications would be on our budget if we carve them out and give them a separate fund. We have one one other situation where we, the city council directed to carve out the Doheny, I'm sorry, the Lantern Village um, impact fee mm -hmm. to go to the Doheny Village beautification account. That's so why I remember that. Yeah. All right. So try pal next to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're secretly cringing. I don't make policy. Okay, no other questions. I will ask for a motion. Second. Who made it? What are we doing? We're we're making making motion. Motion. A motion to receive, receive and file. file. Yeah. I make a motion to receive and file the quarterly financial report. And second. And second. I'm sorry, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, take the roll, please. Member Federico? Yes. Member Killebrew? Aye. Member Mitchell? Yes. Vice Chair Frost? Yes. Chair Mitchell. Uh, um, I must go. Yes. This motion passes by a vote of 5 to 0. Great. Next is uh, item number 4, which is the annual review of the investment policy. I noted it said updated, so I kind of read through it looking for the changes. And I couldn't. The dates. The date. That's all I thought too. I wanted to make sure I was. All right. Sure. Yeah, I, I did see that the data score made no recommendation, so it's all the same from last year. We just yeah, data score annually. reviewed it to make sure it was still in compliance with the government code, and it's yeah. all in compliance, and there were no changes. Good job. Okay. And it's a government government code requirement that the city council adopt the change. Review and adopt it. 
And we do the review every year, right? It's part of our audit. Are we going to have too much money in late? And that historically we've had too high a percentage of our money in late or something like that. I think we updated on the last, we, we did do a, an additional, uh, we actually made a, the five year uh, T note investment. Right. So we had gone down to, we had let two mature without renewing just mm -hmm. for cash concerns with COVID. Uh, we made one five year, and as the markets are changing here, and it's trying to get back into the design of having ladder portfolio ladder. one through five year. For, you know, half the portfolio. We had talked about that at the last meeting. Yeah. Has there yeah. been any action on that? We did the one. We so we had one that had matured in 2020 that we didn't reinvest into new note because of rates. Um, so this last October we had that money, and then we had another note maturing. We reinvested the one that was maturing the five year to, in another five year. But we didn't reinvest the money from the previous year to four year because there's a wrong missing because those order. yeah those mm -hmm. rates were just still really low okay, for the right. shorter term notes. But by the end of this year, we yeah. rates should get better for sure by the end of this year. Another one. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Any other further discussion questions? If not, this is a receive and discuss. Do we take a vote on those? Yeah. Okay. So, need a motion to receive and discuss. All motion. Second. <laughs> Member Federico? Yes. Member Killebrew? Yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Vice Chair Frost? Yes. Chair Mesco? Yes. This motion passes by a vote of 5 to 0. Okay, item number five is the Coastal Animal Service Authority Unfunded Pension Liability Update. So I could ask for a staff report. Yes, so the city is a member of the Costa JPA for Animal Sheltering and um, Control Services, and right now the Costa employees are under um, a pension plan through a private company, Milliman Inc., and uh, Councilmember Federico asked this be added to the agenda to discuss the current unfunded liability or Dana Point's portion of the unfunded liability, which as of June 30th, 2021, was a little over $300,000. Mr. Chair, I could probably add some color commentary to that if you're interested. In oh, yeah. Yeah, he's interested. Um, uh, one of the reasons I want to bring this up is because one of the reasons it's got to this point is because it's no one's paid attention for so many years, and I wanted to just bring it to everyone's awareness. You know, not only do our own employees have it, our own city hall has unfunded liability, but that agency has one as well. Um, we're trying to take some steps. Well, let me start with. This is important in the near term because CASA has applied to move these employees from the Milliman privately run pension fund that is a legacy city of San Clemente fund into CalPERS. If and when that approval happens, CalPERS is going to ask for some amount of money written in a check to buy down this unfunded liability. It's about 70% funded right now. Is that correct, Mike? So you guys remember? Uh, it's yeah, it's Is about seventy five percent. Seventy five percent funded. They're they're gonna probably want at least eighty, and we've heard them say maybe ninety percent funded to get into Calpers. So that will require a check. The agency itself doesn't have the money to do it. So we, the two cities, the two member cities, will be asked to make a contribution. So something for us to think about, you know, whether that comes out of that pot of money that's already set aside for pension that we're going to talk about next, or somewhere else. We just need to be prepared for that, and just and know that this is a liability that we have. We are so that's that part of it. The rest of the story is we are trying to do some stuff at agency to become more fiscally responsible and reduce this. But the reality is this is old legacy stuff that we're sort of stuck with. Um, how are they funded for operations? How are they funded? 
They are funded by charging uh, service fees to the two member cities, basically in the same percentage that you see right there, 32 mm -hmm. and 68. City of Dana Point pays 32% of the bill. They have two separate uh, budget lines over there, one for animal control, the uniformed animal control officers, the, 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 the dog wardens, mm -hmm. and one for animal sheltering. Um, and we, we pay into those two funds, which is basically a charge for service from the agency to the two member cities. And we pay for it out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's no like specific revenue stream. Yeah, no, it's no, no that and it, the agency itself does generate some revenue, so that offsets whatever the charge for services yeah. are. Um, so and quick, and they get quite a bit of cost covered by the pet project fund. They get a huge mm -hmm. amount of money, a very large amount of money. Um, that is paid for uh, by the Pet Project Foundation. They, they've got a, it's a unique sort of setup. Government agency that provides required government services, and they've got a partner nonprofit mm -hmm. who is in the building with them, who covers a lot of it. So it's an animal shelter as well. It's an animal. Oh, it's okay. a physical animal shelter. Got it. Uh, at, in addition to having animal control officers. Got it. Um, they generate revenue from licensing. So in mm -hmm. theory, everyone who has a dog or a cat has a <coughs> pet license. Mm -hmm. uh, adoption fees, citations, uh, but it is a losing, it, it, it is a money losing venture. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a service. Okay. And how often is that 3268 split evaluated? Annual. 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 Based on population for animal control and based on number of calls for service or number of. Yeah, it's mostly number of licensed animals. Number of licensed animals mm -hmm. for. Yeah, it's a goof. That, that one's a little bit of a goofy setup because the irony is you can, in theory, cheat that by having fewer licensed animals, but then you're cheating the agency by lowering the revenue on number of licenses. It's, yeah. it's, no. But it's there's a agreed upon long 1995. Yeah. Yeah. When the agency was formed, agreed upon formula for how to split that cost. How much do they run in the deficit every year? Ninety percent. Yeah. I mean, if but the, the, the licensing fees are set in a manner that they don't disincentivize people to get licensed. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, they want to make sure that the animals are spayed, neutered, vaccinated. Is public safety. Yeah. Uh, the challenge, the, uh, the the real challenge we have is percentage of, of licensed animals. We're we're well under fifty percent. Even if we hit, the reality is, even if we hit hundred percent on all the animals being licensed, it still would not break even the market. Yeah. It's uh, we've got some other things that we need to do to try to make that. Are you on the CASA board? I am our city's representative to the CASA board. I've been trying to find ways to make it more of a fiscally responsible agency that we are able to to trying really hard. Uh, but and does Millman want the Casa to exit or are they Millman would love Casa to exit. Millman yeah. hates being in the defined benefit <laughs> the private, business. Private sector started getting out of this about a decade ago. Yeah. They uh, the city of San Clemente shopped around the city of San Clemente got all of their city employees into CalPERS <coughs> in 2014. In 2014, for some goofy administrative reason, they kind of didn't get things right. CASA didn't get the CASA employees into CalPERS at the same time. So they were stuck with, it's Milliman and it's actually run by somebody else. It's their, their pension keeps getting kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's, the name is Milliman now, but it's actually, I think someone else managed yeah, They had been Great West it, back in, Everyone's well, getting out of the defined benefit business. Great for a good got out of it. Yeah. Um, uh, so up until two years ago, um, the JPA was its own corporation in the eyes of all, for all liabilities. So the liability would not have transferred to the cities. It would have been with the JPA. But the state law changed two years ago that pierced that corporate rail and the liabilities for unfunded pension liabilities now go to the member agencies. Uh, so At the time, the agency didn't have the financial yeah. strength to be members of CalPERS. They, so had, the they were 65% like funded and yeah. no revenue stream. No so we are on the hook for this. I mean, yeah. Previously, we would have been on the hook just 
you know, if we wanted to kind of do the right thing, now we're legally on the hook as of 2019. AB, uh, whatever it was, that makes us want. Uh, so the reason I believe you said you wanted this on the agenda for this meeting was because you wanted to talk about how this fits into the strategic plan and do some budget shifting? Is that what well, your intention was? Uh, not the strategic plan, but <laughs> just the long-term financial plan. And it, this segues into what we're about to talk to next, the, the 115 trust. I want to make sure we don't lose sight of the fact that we owe $334,000 to CASA's pension before we make decisions on what we're going to do with the four and a half million dollars we have set aside for pension money. So, you know, I I might even say, uh, do we earmark 335,000 of that? Or do we, you know, what do we do? I don't know the answer. I just want to make sure this is not lost. And then we're like bummed out later that we owe 335 grand sitting there. Is there a benefit to just paying off the 330,000? Well, we're getting charged six, I don't know, what is I it? I think it's their discount six, six five. Yeah. Millman's is very conservative yeah. to their credit. Yeah, it's probably five percent or five point five. Yeah, it's it's under small. So if I if I do the math right, I think I think it's like fifty thousand if it's seventy percent, it takes fifty thousand more to get you to uh eighty. Or no, no I can't I think right. it's, oh, it's fifty thousand no, dollars check. We don't know what Cal We don't is know I, I, they haven't given us they're doing their actuarial evaluation now. Uh, we don't know what they're going to tell us. I sus my guess is based on the, the agency's financial position, which is basically zero money set aside in any sort of reserves, and we just bill our member cities every year for what we cost. I, if I were them, I'd say I want 90%. And I think that they have a lot of leeway on what percentage um, funded, as I understand, they have a lot of leeway on what percentage funded they require for a new agency to come in. Based yeah. on the overall financial strength of the agency, so we'll do about seven yeah, seven thousand. Uh, yeah, something like that. Per ten percent bump, something like that. <clears throat> Speaking of what Jimmy was saying, actually, as far as don't lose it, if we, as we became liable for the balances, theoretically, should we have Casa's balance sheet? totaling up to ours, or at least 32% of it. You know what I mean? Should we have a new entity number in here? You know what I mean? I don't know, fund 28, our percentage new of liability. liability. It's, it, is a, it is now an actual liability, right? I, I was actually wondering, like, legally, if we had to. I wasn't that picked up. It's a, it was a very good question. We can check on that. Yeah. We have to report our pension liability in our financial statements. I don't know under GAP if it or GAP that that would also feels be like it liability. should. It feels like it should. So it yeah. feels to me like the right thing to do is to report it and, 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 and well, if, if nothing, it as if a nothing else in a, in a footnote. So. How's that different from the sheriff's liability? Do we report that one? No, because we contract with the sheriff's. We are not a owner. We're not a member. So Orange theory, County Fire Authority, yes. Theory you could be. Orange County Fire Authority, we're yeah. under joint powers authority like CASA, that their unfunded pension liabilities do transfer to the 25 or whatever it is. Are they on our balance? Member cities, no. Yeah, that. But they're actually getting close <laughs> to being fully funded. They've, they've been working on the plan for about seven or eight years. Um, and with the huge returns they had last year, um, and I think they're over 90 now. The reason why I agree, like, why aren't that, you know, why is that on our The difference is we don't control any of that money. It goes liability. directly, although it's still our liability, right? They just take the money directly. Gap may not have caught up with the change in the California law, right? So. One of the reasons, good, very good questions, why I'm bringing this up. Like, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to lose sight of it. I'd rather book it as a liability and there's notes there and plan to it than. Like it doesn't exist, not that they know. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like scale yeah. their balance sheet and you can't fix it. Times it by don't know for a cent. So, yeah. um, so but why wouldn't fire or authority have to be on there as well? Oh, it's I don't think I'm gonna bet that this is not common mm -hmm. in the United States for 
these joint separate legal corporations uh, to have pierced the corporate veil to hold it's members. Got to be unique to the state of California and public agencies. Like, honestly, but I'm talking off the top of my head now, but I'm, I know that it's it's pretty unique. I don't know that we were the first, but it's not something commonly talked about. It. Uh, government finance officers um, in any of the discussions I've seen. So. Curious, yeah. That could take a long time to go up and add up your fractions of the <laughs> random balance sheets. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. It's like with the Orange County Fire Authority, it's going to be a similar thing. You're going to have to do a pro rata distribution based on, on every how account. much property tax is received from Dana Point residents toward the Orange County Fire Authority. And then you have to get to back out things that are regional responsibilities <laughs> of the fire authority that come out of the county's tax analysis. I think it's ugly. Yeah, I would think. All right. So um, my, I would recommend that um, we've informed the FRC of this being out there and that we don't have enough information yet from CalPERS. Um, so as far as options, um, I think our options, our discussion on options is kind of limited until we know what, what they're going to demand. So let's assume, if we assume they demand nothing, that 75% funded is good enough, do we want to do something with uh, funding this or, because there's nothing stopping the city of it from getting just clearing ourselves and writing a check, right? And, and then any, any uh, negative going forward uh, from the date we write our check, we would get a pro rata distribution of any new liability, uh, but we're not going to own 700000 and whatever changes that come with that, because uh, it's going to accrue interest. And I would, my, my two cents is, as a member of that board, I would be skeptical about writing a check in any greater proportion than our fellow member city of San Clemente is going to write. Hypothetically, we write a $334,000 check tomorrow. Dana Point is now 100% funded, but the pension plan itself is still only 82% funded, whatever that is, and San Clemente goes. Now, we need somebody to keep track of the actuaries when they do their reports and come up with these derived numbers, because the income liability is a derived number, mm -hmm. they do it in annual layers. So you pick up the annual layers beyond when we pay it off. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally doable. The actuaries who do it are hired by the city of San Clemente. Yeah, but they're, they, they have, they have uh, policies, practices, and standards that they have to follow. Mm -hmm. They happen to use Bartel, Bartel who we also use. Okay. Um, I mean, as long as you guys are confident that that can't get screwed up and that someday, I don't five think or changes, six years from now, when I don't think they could direct changes in assumptions that would uh, negatively well, impact the, the, the only thing is, I mean, my initial reaction was the same as yours because we're all here. We have these answers. It sounds great. And then 10 years from now, Bartel's gone. Everyone here is gone. Somebody forget the He's retired. This, whatever. He's the city whatever manager. Cases, but also, also, the percentages change yeah. every year. So what happens next year when that gets streaked by two or three percentage points? And they're like, well, not only do you have to figure out that that new base, but I mean, it gets like so exponentially, so many moving parts because of the yeah. Senate. So I agree with you. It's like if San Clemente said, if Per said you have to do it, then you both have and to do it. And we both do it. And we, I would like to do it in equal shares. Because yeah. yeah. it's clean. And earmark that money. Yeah. I understand yeah. we're losing the 5% yeah. on it every year. But, you know, it's just the math gets so tricky to, yeah. you know. I think you're better off if you had if you had an extra, whatever the number is here, uh, you know, an extra 100 grand instead of throwing it here, throw it in purse. <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, the, if nothing else, the discount rate is higher, so the interest charge is higher, right? Yeah. But I still would like to, you know, earmark or, or know that that liability exists, so we're tracking it. If maybe yeah. maybe just putting it on our books as a liability on a balance sheet is enough to no one will forget about that, um, and, and also be prepared for in the mm -hmm. short term mm -hmm. writing at least a seventy thousand dollar check, I believe. Uh, Whatever. See, so you probably know that. I mean, whatever that number is to get us up to, to get them into CalPERS, 
Um, Fortel is currently working on updated actuary valuation. So, they are, okay. yeah, Jake said he should, they're St. Louis Finance Officer. We should have new numbers probably soon. Okay. Updated numbers. Well, would, uh, to, to solve the potential of issues, like um, Raul was saying, and you, I think CASA could ever cut a, send us a bill every year and just clear it out. And get down back to zero every year, then all of a sudden it's not. And we could do that. Because um, as these percentage changes, I kind of agree. Like, I tend to think that could get mucked up. But if you cleared it out. You have to write the check to the pension plan for the unfunded liability is still there. You gotta yes, write the check. Can. To you can pay off your unfunded liability. There are agencies in that enviable position that can do that. We can't, they can't. I, I guess transfer, I was gonna say make a transaction, but just transfer it to our balance sheets. So there, we couldn't write them a $334,000 check. There would still be an unfunded liability with the pension plan. Because of St. Helena? Unless we have some kind of legal agreement that defines how much is ours and how much is theirs. There's still an unfunded liability of the pension plan. Even if CASA has our cash in their account. Okay. Okay. Good. Continue the discussion. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't think we need to take any action on it. We are going to research if we can put that on the balance sheet so we can put, make I'm, sure we can. I'm work. almost certain that we can't put it on the balance sheet because it's not going to be gap. Okay. Um, but there's an argument that we could include it in our footnotes so that it's disclosed. That is an audited question. And it will probably make their head hurt unless they have JPAs and they're already looking at this. And I'm pretty sure they probably have JPAs. We'll ask. Yeah. Um, the possibility does exist that CalPERS could come back to CASA before this body meets again and says, hey, we're ready to let you in. Here's what the number, the dollar amount is. Uh, and I guess I would ask the group, since this is going to be a motion, but is, if no one, no one sees any problem with paying whatever the minimum required is to get into CalPERS uh, and then I think it sounds like there's even some interest in just paying more than that. It doesn't sound like we have a choice to not pay the minimum. Right. Well, we could not get any calpers. No. <laughs> sure. If we didn't have the money, we could. So is there a motion on that? I don't know if there needs to be. Um, I think we'd want to, if we want to move on it with the council, we'd want to with a motion to see the action. Or see. Can you make a motion? Um, what do you think, Mike, to, to, to recommend to the City Council to authorize funding it up to 90%? I mean, I'm, I'm picking numbers arbitrarily. Well, why don't, since we have a hard number mm -hmm. and the difference between mm -hmm. 70000 and 334000 uh, from our unassigned fund balance that we have access right now, I, I would, I would uh, either make a motion second or vote for a uh, recommendation that the city, if the FRC supports spending up to $334,720. Up to, yeah. To take okay. care of this unfunded liability. And then and then we'll, we'll make the decision. We, we might be less than that if it doesn't make sense, but up to, yeah. So I'll make a motion that we ask the city council, or recommend to the city council to authorize spending up to 330, whatever the number is in the agenda report. Um, to pay off uh, the CASA unfunded pension liability. Second. And is the thought that that uh, you up to is the max, obviously, but you would do whatever San Clemente does? Probably. I, I would, right. When, when I personally wouldn't think it would be, even though we're authorizing up to, if we can't convince San Clemente to do the same, if they do half, I think I would probably want to do half. Yeah. I just think it's prudent to, unless we unless we can guarantee that the auditors can keep track of this and make sure that we don't end up double paying down the road someday, yeah. um, and that the accrued interest 
So it all keeps going to San Clemente at that point. It doesn't get shared equally because that, like. Sounds like you're going to have a cough call, call with Mary Beth. Or yeah. If, if they can guarantee that, then I would probably just clear it out, right? Yeah. If they can't guarantee that or if that looks tricky or messy, that, to me, it might, like, just keeping track of the accrued interest. Yeah. Once we have zero and there, it's all got to go to all that interest has to go to them on that amount. And then I don't even knew that we start getting small percentages of percentages for interest. I don't know. Like, I don't like paying more than a sample yeah. like this. I sit on the board with them. I don't. Even know <laughs> so the way the actuarials are done, though, mm -hmm. the gains and losses in every year are tracked separately. So. So that it shouldn't be an issue. In my mind, it's not that. Um, well, I could be oversimplifying it as well. So. Well, if you look at the most recent, the Bartel actually we have, they do split because San Clemente kept their retirees when they moved to, in the Milliman plan mm -hmm. when they went to CalPERS. Mm -hmm. So um, it's broken up by San Clemente and CASA. Mm -hmm. So it's possible maybe they can break it up CASA and then a subgroup to Dana Point San Clemente. We, but we checked with the actuarial to see if they could do that. Okay. I'm confident the detail is in their modeling because uh, they have to keep track of this by year. Because oh. each year is a different amortization base. Uh, but I could be wrong. So, if they, if they could so how about this? Amend the motion to include in a prudent manner that protects future city interests. <laughs> I'm, I'm amenable right. to that. Yes. Do we need it? to include that we're going to contribute equally to San Clemente? I just put it. I just put it in a, we just did a, a fancy catch way. All. We're either going to do equal to San Clemente or higher if we can guarantee yeah. that it's they're a, not going to that we can protect okay. our future financial. Okay. Interest. Okay. I did the motion. I did. I did. Screw yeah. second. You're okay with the amendment? Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Member Federico. Yes. Member Killebrew. Yes. Member Mitchell. Yes. Vice Chair Frost. Yes. Chair Mesley. Yes. This motion passes by a vote of five to zero. Thank you, guys. That was no tedious but important. Uh, okay, we'll move on to item six, section 115 trust pension liability update. Staff report, please. Uh, yeah, so last FRC meeting, uh, we announced that we were going to issue an RFP for section 115 trust services. Uh, staff did issue the RFP and we received four responses. Um, after review of the proposals, um, staff interviewed both CalPERS, which has their SEP program, and PARS, which has their pension rate stabilization program and then uh, did a deeper dive um, in those two proposals. Um, and I'm just gonna go briefly over the, the SEP plan. There's basically two investment strategies with the SEP plan. Strategy one, their, their net estimated net return is about 5%. Their strategy two is 4%. Now it's important to note that those expected returns were formulated when they um, implemented those plans back in 2019 and haven't been updated. And if you probably look at actual market returns and activity, it's probably less than that. And they are going through a review process now to see, they're probably gonna have to mix up their um, investments in order to actually make those returns. Um, kind of similar to what they did with the ALM process with the PERP for the main retirement plan. Um, and also important to note that CalPERS staff directs the investments of the SEP program. So if you put money in there, you have the same people managing those investments as you do in the pension plan. Um, and the second option we looked at was with PARS, their pension rate stabilization plan. Um, and they actually offer investment um, strategies with both Vanguard and Highmark Capital. Highmark Capital is a little bit more expensive. They're about 60 basis points. Um, and they've worked with Highmark quite a, quite a while. Um, and then more recently, they started offering four investment options with Vanguard, um, which is a little bit more, um, not as expensive. It's about 30 basis points. Uh, I should go back and say the SEP program is 25 basis points. So not that much difference. Um, staff is recommending PARS, the PARS program, because it does offer the city a chance to diversify its investments away from CalPERS. Um, you're basically not 
the, the cost is about five basis points, which really isn't that much. And you get the four investment options, and you can invest in more than one in more than one of the options. Like you can put a little bit more money in the conservative or the balanced. Um, and I thought it was interesting to note. So CalPERS, their pension uh, retirement fund, made 21.3 percent as a 630-21. The Vanguard strategies, there's two strategies. Um, the growth made 30.86, and the balance made 24.26. So even these strategies we could invest in our money actually made a little bit more than actually CalPERS did. Um, so, and also CalPERS, or PARS, we would get um, increased administrative um, help for staff, and also their customer service was really, really good. So, um, staff's recommendation, we're hoping to bring um, a resolution to council on March 1st to go ahead and go with PARS as the administrator of the Section 115 Trust, and then come back at the April 26th uh, FRC meeting, and we can have PARS here, as well as, we'll probably have someone from Vanguard on the phone to discuss the different investment options and kind of educate the group on, um, and maybe get some direction from the FRC on how they want to invest the money. Um, we do have $4 million set aside for pension obligations. Um, so that's that part of it. But I did also want to give you a pension liability update based on that 21.3% return as of 6.30.21. Um, so, so as our last valuation, which was June 30th, 2020, our combined unfunded liability was about 7.5 million. Uh, we work with GovInvest, who is a company the city contracts for the contracts with to help with um, modeling different actuarial scenarios, and they're estimating our pension liability going down to 4.9 million. So you're going from about 77 and a half percent funded to about 86 and a half percent funded. So um, I know we have 4 million and you're looking at now unfunded liability about 4.9 million. So what we'll also do is we'll bring back some gov investment modeling at the April 26th meeting to maybe, do we put it all in a section 115 trust and just level off the city's payments for a certain period of time? Do we pay off some bases and get some interest savings? Um, but we'll bring back that on the 26th as well. So just a quick sidestep. Uh, we had, the council had directed uh, setting aside five million. And then when COVID hit, um, we started seeing the hotels tank. I think it was in May of 2020, right after we saw the impacts. We grabbed a million dollars out of that and put it you know, basically into our Amazon fund balance. Um, we also grabbed some of our, we were going to transfer, I'll say it was two million to the community investment account for future capital projects. We just kept that in the general fund. Um, so we were ready with five million back then, but we, it stands right now at four million. When we closed the books um, for FY21 and took the report to FRC and then council last September, um, we mentioned that we had contributed a million and we want to take a look at that. We want to see how this year is performing. Uh, and then decide how much to throw over the fence to the community investment account, how much to have in the um, unfunded pension liability account. So we're still working toward that. Um, you know, I think in hindsight, waiting, I think, was was a good idea, uh, particularly with the Omicron just now hitting. So we'll be able to see by the time we go to council in March with our mid-year report uh, and talk about where to put the excess on the sign from balance, we will have at least seen um, what happened in January. We'll get some indications from the hotels on how they were doing in February uh, to make some you know, measured informed decisions. Uh, you know, everything right now looks like whatever the numbers come back from the actuaries for this um, and our discussions with um, GovInvest, I think we're going to have a good grounding for a discussion on 
policy decisions on what to fund, what to pay off, you know, what our target's going to be. You know, keep hearing even from the chief actuary at CalPERS, we don't want to go to 100%. Um, so there's, there's that also. So. Mike, in your mind, and I, you may not know this, so we're at 86% now. Is the sweet spot that we plus when we take into account what we've got invested in the 115 we are at 100 percent or no we still should be up below that but even with whatever we throw into the 115 is there a s <laughs> you can't overfund the PERS account um, tax laws or something to do with that in section 115 and if we wanted to push it toward 100 I believe are okay, um, but even then, the you know, even the folks that you know are advising us on the investments, there nobody's saying shoot for the hundred percent. I know that everybody, policy wise and you know, public, you know, perception wise, wants to say we're hundred percent funded. Um, you talk to the chief actuary at Calpers, and he thinks you're hundred percent funded when you're in between ninety and ninety five. Just because of the swings that can happen in any given year, that's my quote. But you know, just based on all the presentations I've heard over the years, you don't want to go overfunded because you're talking about liabilities that go out fifty years. So ninety. Okay, that was my question. Okay, so seventy years. Okay, that at least helps now me. Now you can listen to C because she might have a different take on things. So. No, I agree. I think. Well, because what happened was when they passed TEFRA, so before if you were overfunded, you can put whatever you were overfunded towards your normal cost. But they passed TEFRA, and now you can't do that. So you would have basically a, a credit on your unfunded liability until there's losses to offset that credit. So you kind of want to stay around 9095. I would agree with that. Um, because you never want to have that credit sitting with CalPERS on the books. So. Because they'll never happen back either. <laughs> yeah, no, they you. won't write you a check. No, yeah, I'm they wouldn't. won't give it back, uh, that's for sure. I'd like to draw a distinction between funded, which means we've given the money to PERS, PARS, who know it, Millennium, in our last discussion, and committed, right? Like, I'm okay with committing, earmarking, whatever, blocking off 100% of what our liability is. And if that means, Moving, you know, another nine hundred and thirteen thousand dollars over from the hopes and dreams account into the the pension fund. Even if we don't put it into a one fifteen trust, and even if we don't give it to Calpers, having it set aside. I mean, I can't think of any more fiscally responsible than having carved aside every penny that we own a liability. It's, we can then walk around and say we. All of our liabilities are accounted for. Right. Committed, at least. Yeah, I don't know what the right word is in government accounting, but well, no, the section, means you've section, actually given them Section money. 115 is a commitment. We can't take it back right. for anything other than paying for pension costs, but it can't supplant an annual pension cost. It can, it can supplant a future pension cost. So if, if it does better than to. we you know, think, we, then we'll, they'll have a there'll be a windfall to the general fund some year in the future because we'll pay it out of 115 to, instead of general yeah, fund. To the extent of our, our annual right. contribution that's required, yeah. So uh, I'm one vote in here, but I would be happy to recommend to the city. And I don't know, you know, we get, we're talking about we're probably gonna have a greater understanding of fund balance than we anticipated. We, you know, I love the hopes and dreams accounts, but to me, I don't care, you know, I'm differentiating between funded percentage yeah. and commitment percentage. I would love to see 100% in this case, you know, using the latest numbers, 4.91 million estimated. Put, in, estimated, put into a 115 <clears throat> trust. And now maybe, again, realizing maybe we take some of that 4.9 million and directly pay off some of the longer term, higher- um, Some of the, base, the longer basis. Longer basis yeah. points. Um, and then all the rest of it going to a 115 trust. And I, I will support, by the way, um, so that I don't have to talk anymore, I will support the Vanguard, um, PARS, the PARS, PARS, plan, the Vanguard, PARS Vanguard plan. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. 
I have a question. The, the other two firms just did not provide a good proposal. I'm just curious. So Chandler, Chandler Asset Mass Management, yeah. they provide uh, individual employer trust. Mm -hmm. um, and we are recommending a multiple employer trust just because which $4 million is a lot of money for anybody, right, or any organization. But they usually hand, when you're going to do an individual trust, it's usually much larger amounts. Mm -hmm. I think one of their clients is Irvine, and their their trust is like fifty million dollars mm. because there's a lot more work and administration and yeah. managing the investments. Um, Keenan, they they've been in the business not as long as Pars and Pers. Um, they have mostly like school districts, um, which doesn't make disqualify them. Um, and also, they're mainly that company is. We actually contract with Keenan for our, our employee benefits. They're a benefits broker. So they're kind of in a different business. Mm. Um, and really, PARS and PERS are kind of the, the leaders in, this, in the Section 115 trust. PARS is the long standing big dog for yeah. Section 115s. Um, but they, did, they have been in the business for the. Um, they do provide other retirement. Post retirement yeah. health care. Mm. Yeah, they for do the like OPEP. 13 trust. years, but they've only been in the. Section 115 for pensions for three or four years. They Our, PARS has been PERS is only since 2019. Yeah. So they've only got 67 million in assets with 57 clients. So PARS has 2.2 billion under investment with 251 agencies. Um, so PARS is the big dog. Got it. Okay. I would just offer, uh, from a municipal investor and credit perspective, which is what I do for a living, 90% uh, is considered a, a, a very good funding ratio. 80% is adequate. Once you're like in the 70s, low 70s, certainly in the 60s, it's a red flag. Like, it can get really bad from here. Um, so the, the reason a lot of people don't like to be fully funded is really because you tell everybody you're fully funded and then CalPERS underperforms tomorrow, mm -hmm. next year, anymore. and they're like, what happened? I thought you guys were fully funded. How come we have a new liability? And sometimes there's that issue, and then the other issue is some people say, maybe not so much as in previous years, but if you're fully funded or overfunded, then the pensions, the, the, the unions want more. So it's like, hey, you can afford it, you're overfunded. That's so what happened in that's what the started this all. That's what started all this. but. Um, I thought the report was very well done, very logical, and I totally am, am in similar agreement with your recommendation. I do think that when you have the ability to have a 115 trust, why would you give more money to PERS? If you could, you're basically diversifying yourself. Mm -hmm. And we all know that PERS will have underperformance coming up. You know, I think the outlook is really above expected GDP growth for the, for the next couple of years, but come 24, 25, Clearly, there will be some dips, corrections. That's right around the corner. So I know you made a motion, right? Was that a motion? Uh, no, I did not. Oh, a okay, question, okay. and then I threw oh, out okay. my, uh, I just threw out my, where I stood. I, I, okay. I, I, could, I could turn that into a motion if you'd like. I mean, this is a receive and discuss, so I don't think we need to vote on it. Uh, well, we're coming back in like April. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, she we, we want to council for, oh, March to go with PARS. To, to go with PARS. So but I, coming I, back to this committee to, and bringing PARS and Vanguard yeah. here to talk about the different. But do we vote on this item? No. We don't vote on this item. No. no. We, we can make a recommendation. We can vote on a recommendation to the council to, to go with PARS. Okay. But we don't identify the specific strategy. No, and I, I talked to PARS and they said it's very common to go ahead and, because we don't pay anything until we put money into the trust. And we wouldn't do that until we know how we were going to put, what we were going to invest in. Would we recommend uh, staff taking this to council, council authorizing contract with PARS, and then direct staff to go work on options and bring it back? Second. Got that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this why you record this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, we have a first and second. Please take the vote. Member Federico? Yes. Member Killebrew? Yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Vice Chair Frost? Yes. Chair Mitchell? Yes. This motion passes by a vote of 5 to 0. 7 4 down to 4 9. God, you don't see that much in like 
this world anymore. I mean, the, the, the one question that I have for PARS and for awesome. our April report is like, you, know, you have four options, right? And to me, it's like comparing an apple and an orange and a banana and a, and a grape. So if you look at the results, you expect, you expect the growth to have the highest rate, and it does, since it's short term. Uh, whenever inception, which is very uh, recent. But it just follows the logical, what you would accept, right? So when I look at this, and I used to be at another board for 20 years, and we had a, a, a an endowment. When these people come in, I always say, what are you measuring performance against? So how much risk are we taking? I know growth is more risk than balance, which is more than conservative, which is more than fixed like income. And how are we gonna measure performance? So that we know how we're doing versus how we should be doing. It's not. This is just how much stomach do you have for for for, uh, for risk. But Those I would assume we're going to be. Benchmarks. Yeah, I assume we're going to be like on balance or growth because it's a retirement fund. It's a long term yeah, fund. Yeah, should be as risky as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the but how do we measure performance? Like what, why, what? why not? How are we going to know how we're doing? How how do we know how we're going to be doing? Okay. Yeah. So, what's the benchmark? And the benchmark can't just be like the S&P 500 index. So oh, we're going to compare the Russell to that. Like, what is it? How do you, do you, how do we know if you're doing well? Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely have the Vanguard rep, and he can answer all those questions. Yeah. What would the what's benchmark the be? What's the beta of the fund? Right. Uh, uh, like, like the great example I can tell you is is a uh, is uh, is this not for profit that was on the board for 20 years. The person would come in and say, we outperformed the uh, the the Barclays, you know, index fund, and then I would say, look at our the fund they had us in, which is a total return fund from one of the big guys, TCW or somebody, and I would say the TCW fund outperformed it, but it's more heavily weighted, significantly, meaningfully more in mortgages, which are more volatile. So, too, of course, better, we're supposed to be better outperform, right. but did we outperform them enough for the additional risk we take? That's that's what we should know. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, the next item is a uh, staff report. Is there any staff reports? Yeah, I just want to update you guys on the upcoming down budget calendar items. So we have the mid-year review coming to City Council on March 1st. Uh, Long-term long financial discussion on March 15th. Um, and the next FRC meeting on April 26th. And I also wanted to bring up that if the council approves the strategic plan that they'll be that that been working on, that staff will bring to the next FRC meeting uh, possible any possible needs for resourcing any of the items in the updated strategic plan. Um, we'll also bring at the next FRC meeting uh, financial policies review of the financial policies. And I also want to let you all know that. Staff is very close to making a decision on budgeting software, <laughs> which we're super excited about, <laughs> yeah. and um, hopefully bring a contract to City Council. I recommend Excel spreadsheets. Yes, <laughs> Jerry won't. is very good at Excel. They spreadsheets. won't open my Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I made my own. <laughs> Why does the, does the laptop start like smoking all the macros? You look up. I, I had to go into the old columns from like 2008, 9, 10, copy and paste just the numbers so there's no formulas. Oh, yeah. God. Because it was dimming the lights on city. Oh, my <laughs> so dangerous. And that was it for staff reports. Great. What about finance review committee member reports? Any? I would like to thank um, member member now Mitchell for her two terms consecutively as the chair here, and thank you, Raul, Mr. Oh, Chairman, for being here and doing this. Your input is uh, invaluable. And staff, C as always, thank you for their super professional reports. I know we take things kind of light in here and we joke around a little bit. Part of Many thinks that we're able to do that because of the confidence we have in the system, but we all take this very seriously, and I appreciate that. I second that. Aye. 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 <laughs> um, Aye. 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 And I think last is adjournment. So the next meeting will be held April 26th, 4 p.m., in the same room. Okay.